But, um, you know, it's interesting, a lot of us uh, reflect on the reality, don't we, of how powerful fear can be. But often we don't think about the other reality that this particular scripture talks about, and that is perfect love is greater than fear. In fact, perfect love casts out all fear. And um, I think it's important that we celebrate that, celebrate the light uh, and be open to the light in our lives. But I want to share about uh, actually the gospel today and begin with uh, an illustration from a movie. You know, movies in our contemporary society are are a a very powerful, visual, moving form of communication. And there was a movie I watched one time entitled The Mission. It's actually based on a true story set in South America. Uh, The events actually occurred in 1750 on the borderlands of Argentina, Paraguay, and Brazil. Uh, Robert De Niro, who played Captain Mendoza, was actually a slave trader of Indians. Uh, He either captured them and sold them for profit, of course, or he killed them. Uh, Jeremy Irons played Father Gabriel, and he actually was a Jesuit priest uh, sharing the good news, the gospel, uh, at a mission called San Carlos, which was up way above the falls, and it was a mission uh, to the Indians uh, there. As the story goes along, Captain Mendoza was attracted to a certain countess in town who happened to be attracted to his brother. Um, Mendoza ends up killing his brother in a jealous rage. And as Father Gabriel came back to the town, he noticed that Captain Mendoza was literally wasting away. He was drowning his sorrows uh, by drinking Uh, He was just lethargic and sitting around. Obviously, it was the way in which he was dealing with his pain. And as uh, Father Gabriel met with Captain Mendoza, Captain Mendoza uh, finally said to him, as Father Gabriel was probing him about what was wrong with him, uh, Captain Mendoza said to him, there is no redemption for me. No redemption. And you see, the, the reality for Captain Mendoza is he felt very deeply the the sin in his life, the uh, great wrong that he did in killing his brother, and that there was no hope for him, basically. And uh, Father Gabriel says something to Captain Mendoza that was very interesting. And it was simply this, as a Roman Catholic priest, do you trust me to choose your penance? Open-ended question, Obviously, Captain Mendoza was very desperate at that point to even begin to say yes to a question like that from a priest because you never know what the priest is going to do for your penance. (laughs) Do you trust me to choose your penance? In the next scene, there is an incredible picture of the uh, missionaries traveling back up the falls to where the Indians live. And walking behind them is Captain Mendoza, no longer in his stately armor, no longer with a sword by his side, but rather there is this huge bag carrying all that stuff that he used to wear, his guns, his armor, and his sword, all wrapped around in this bag. And then he is carrying it with this very long rope that is strapped around his body, just carrying it behind him. And as they are climbing up the falls, uh, it's difficult just doing it on your own without carrying that baggage that Captain Mendoza is dragging behind him with the rope, but he is. That's part of his penance. And as he's going up the falls, he makes a few steps up and up these very treacherous, uh, steep and wet rocks. He goes a few steps and then he goes a f- falls a few steps down. And he finally makes it to the top of the falls, bloodied and exhausted and exasperated from his journey. As he makes it to the the top of the falls, the Indians come to greet the missionaries. They're very excited to see them. And they're all hugging each other, and they're very uh, joyful that they're back together again after this absence. But then they notice Captain Mendoza. They noticed this slave trader that had captured and killed them and those that they love. And immediately, as soon as one of them recognizes him, they run over to him with a knife in their hand. 
and they start arguing with each other in their native language about what they're supposed to do with this slave trader. And then they begin to talk with the priest about what's going on here. And the priest, in their language, explains to them what Captain Mendoza was doing. After talking to Father Gabriel, the Indians cut the rope around Mendoza's neck and body and kicked that bag of his past into the water which eventually went over the falls. The slave trader, Captain Mendoza, wept uncontrollably because the persecuted, the slaves, the murdered, had set him free. You know, at times in our lives, only others will be able to set us free from ourselves and from the baggage that we carry. And of course, this is especially true in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. In our gospel lesson today, we hear Jesus say to, say to us in very powerful and clear words, come to me. And it's interesting, he's talking to a very specific group of people a group of people that have literally existed throughout time, all of human history from the very beginning. And the group of human beings that uh, Jesus is talking to are the people who are weary and burdened. Well, that could just be about anybody, couldn't it? There's probably some people in this church today who are part of that group. Jesus says to us and to his disciples in that moment, come to me, all who are weary and burdened. Just like Captain Mendoza, who had that rope around his body and was carrying the bag of his life behind him as a form of penance, as a form of entering into a whole new life all the way up those falls, Jesus is saying to us, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, all who are tired and weighed down by this life. Whether you're carrying a whole bag of things or it might just be one or two things, but the weight is pretty significant for you. He's saying to you and me, come to me. Come to me with those burdens. Now, let me first of all say that a lot of us don't want to come to Jesus unless we have everything together. (laughs) We don't want to come to Jesus unless we have some bragging rights and things are going really well in our lives. But Jesus is saying to people in particular who are weary and burdened, come to me. Come to me, especially those of you who don't have it all together and who are profoundly aware that you need my help. I want you to come to me, especially you. You know, our weariness comes from our burdens, don't they? Our burdens can be simply the day in day day out routines of our lives. It could be the burden of a sin that we're struggling with or maybe a particular person or the weight of some memory that we've carried for so long. For Jesus, in talking in his day to the people that were around him, it was the burden of the law and the burden of the law that the Pharisees and the Sadducees put upon people. I don't know if you knew this or not, but in Jesus' day through the uh, ongoing teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they actually had 613 laws that they had to follow in order to be righteous before God. And I've said it to you before, and I'll say it to you a number of times over and over again, I wouldn't even want to get out of bed having to obey that many laws. I have enough problems with the Ten Commandments, let alone 613 laws. And you see, the reality of the law was simply this. The law was given in the Old Testament to illustrate to the people of Israel and to all of humanity throughout history that it was impossible to fulfill, that the law was impossible for you and me to obey, that it was impossible for us to be righteous before God in our own strength, in our own own power. That was the whole purpose of the law. And so what Jesus is promising to you and to me as we come to him, those who are weary and burdened, is freedom from your sack. 
you're not smiling. <laughs> He's promising you freedom from the burdens and the weight and the yoke that you uniquely carry. And he's promising it to you in a very special way. Take a look at the scripture in the, New Te- in the gospel. Take a look at what he invites you to do and me to do. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens. And he says, I will give you rest. That's a great pr- promise. He's not saying to you, come to me that are carrying burdens and I'm gonna give you more burdens to carry, right? Come to me and I'm gonna make you more weary and more tired. He's not saying that. He's saying, come to me, all of you that are weary and carrying burdens and tired and yoked out, and I'm going to give you rest. That's a nice trade. I'll take that. I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And you see, that's the first trade that needs to happen. First, we need to go to him, and then we need to receive his yoke. He says, take my yoke. Now, You all know that in Jesus' day, a yoke, even to this day, is a wooden frame that's usually placed on the back of animals, very big animals, to make them pull in tandem. And usually they carry very heavy things behind them, like a plow or a wagon or something like that. And the purpose of the yoke was that that they could carry that incredible weight and burden behind them. That was the purpose of the yoke. And you see, the human yoke is what we use to do the work of our life. It's the things we carry in our own lives. It might be the energy that we use to deal with the burdens and the stresses and the yoke that we have in our daily life. And part of being a human being is to live a life. We do have things to do. We are tired at the end of the day. There are things to do around the house, and there is work to do, and there are things to be concerned about. That is all part of being a human being. And you see, at the end of the day, you'll especially feel it if you look in the mirror, if you've had an especially hard day. You, can, you, you know where I see it in people? In their shoulders. People carry their burdens in their shoulders and in their neck. I mean, when I pray for people, I'll reach out and I'll touch their neck and their shoulders, and it's like they're wound tighter than a drum. I mean, my gosh, when I feel them, they'll say, oh, I got a really bad headache, Father Joan. I'll, I'll feel their neck and I'll feel their shoulders. It's no wonder that you have a bad headache. I'd have a bad headache if I felt like that. I mean, you are tight. You are burdened. You are yoked out. That's what I call it. You're yoked out. Not why, that's not Y-O-L-K-E-D. It's Y-O-K-E-D. You're yoked out. Your, your yoke is too much. And you see, you, people carry it in their bodies. You can see it in their faces. And if people have been carrying a yoke for a while, I mean, it's all they can do to really get out of bed in the morning. They're really exhausted and worn out. But it it says something interesting again in this scripture. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know what's easy about Jesus' yoke? As you take his yoke upon you, as you receive that yoke, guess what? He's part of that yoke. (laughs) It's a great deal. You no longer have to carry the yoke of your life alone anymore, but he's part of that yoke carrying it with you. And guess what? As you receive Jesus' yoke upon you, he's also carrying it. And guess what I and others have experienced? He carries most of the weight if you let him. He'll carry most of the weight. In fact, there are moments in my life where I feel like I can't even deal with the weight. I don't, want, I don't even want to deal with the situation or the person or whatever's going on. And there have been moments in my life where he'll carry the whole weight. He'll just take it away and I'll have peace. It's like, man, this is really nice. This is a way to live. That's why Jesus can say that his yoke is easy and his burden is light is because his yoke includes himself and includes you. He says, learn from me. So you see, part of having Jesus' yoke is learning from him. It's living life in a different way. It doesn't mean you have to be Charles Atlas or Mrs. Atlas, who's carrying these incredible weights that grow bigger and bigger each day, 
And before long, you're like crawling along and it's like, my gosh, I can't keep on doing this. This burden is just too big for me. It's too great for me. And I feel exhausted and I feel worn out and I feel like I can't go on. Jesus says, learn from me. And what he's inviting us to learn is we're living life in the wrong way. I'm gentle and humble and of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. What does it say in the scripture? God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And you see, Jesus is inviting us to walk and live our journey with him, to be yoked with him, that we might live out a life that is not burdened and full of weariness and carrying our own yoke, but one that is actually refreshing and light and finding rest for our souls. You were never meant to live a life rooted in stress. You were never meant to live that way. Your body was not created to do that. You were meant to live your life from a place of rest and peace in God. Yes, there will be moments of struggle. Yes, there will be moments of tension. Yes, there will be moments of anxiety and fear. That will happen. But when you live there all the time, that's why we are so diseased. That's why we are breaking down and we're being destroyed is because we were never meant to live that way on an ongoing basis. We were meant to live from a place of rest. Our souls need to find our rest in Jesus. Everything else will flow from that. Humility, grace, love, peace, and joy. My question for you today here, and for myself as well, is are you willing to give your yoke and your burdens that you've been carrying all these years to him? Are you willing to do that? Or are you willing to trust him with that? You know, there are actually people that I pray with who aren't sure whether they're willing to do that or not. They don't know if they can trust God with their life. And maybe you're one of those people here today. Maybe whatever it is you're facing, you feel is so important and so big that only you can handle it. I think you're wrong. I just have to say it, I think you're wrong. I know I've been wrong about that in my own life. And you need to make, you need to make a decision. Are you gonna allow the Lord to have your yoke and take his yoke upon you, which is easy, and his burden, which is light? And what that means is give him your yoke. Give him your sack. What is it or who is it that you've been carrying all these years? Who's in the bag behind you? <laughs> you don't have to name them, but you know who they are. You know who they are or you know what it is. God is not out to kill you. God is out to set you free. God is out to kick that bag once and for all into the river and over the falls into the sea of forgetfulness where it will forever stay. God is into you receiving the yoke of Jesus and walking along with him and then following, listen to me, following his lead, which is easy, <laughs> and his burden, which is light. 